spongy bite point, fading, vibrations, noise. In this video we will show you some tips to maximize your brake performance. To maximize your brake performance we have to check two things. First of all we have to check if your brake is installed correctly. Because there are a lot of parts and all these parts have to installed correctly that we don't cause us any problems. Secondly, we check your setup. If your rotor and pads suits your riding style and your bike. First of all, we have to check the correct installation of the rotor to avoid up and down movements or sideway movements. To mount it correctly, we have to put in all six screws but leave them loose and then turn the rotor clockwise to center it. After that, tighten the screws in a crossing way, but with the correct mount of 4 newton meters. To check the correct height of the brake caliper, we have to have a closer look on the rotor. If we see non, not used or unused parts of the rotor on top or on the bottom of the brake caliper, then we have to correct the height. We can use some washers. And if we have to go further down because we have unused part of the disc on the bottom, then we might have put a wrong adapter on the bike. Now we have to check if both pistons extend evenly, that we use the rotor from both sides equally. And if not, we have to mobilize the pistons. How to do that? You can check out the video in the info box. Next step is to align the caliper in sideways. To do that, we have to trust our eyes. They are more reliable than any tool or tip you might have heard of. We loosen the screws of the caliper and then move it sideways until we see a sliver of light on both sides of the caliper through the pads and the rotors. If you see the sliver of light on both sides, tighten the screws gently and hold the caliper. If you want to further tighten the screws, make sure that you hold the caliper strong so it won't move while tightening the screws. If you've done that correctly, your wheel runs smooth. Now that the installation of your brake is done correctly, you shouldn't hear any noises or vibrations. If you still do though, please check your whole bike because there are other movable things like bearings and stuff. So check the whole bike if there's anything loose or maybe broken. To ensure your maximum brake performance, we also should check the rotor and the brake pads if they are dirty or worn out. For this, we have our transportation tool. This is multi-usable and we have here the long arm. This long arm should fit in between the brake pads. If it not should fit in, then the brake pads are worn out. But there is a more correct way to check it. If you build out your brake pad and then you have this little gap in your transportation tool. If it fits in there, then your brake pad is worn out and should be changed. But there are also other um, causes that can make problems with your brake performance. For example, here we have a glazed brake pad. If the brake pad looks like a mirror, then the brake pad is glazed and should be removed, put in a new one. Because it's not enough to use sandpaper to get rid of the mirror's surface. When you check the surface of your rotor and you see something like oil or grease, then please remove and change your brake pads to new ones. And before that, you should clean the rotor with a correct cleaner. For example, a correct brake cleaner to make sure there's no oil or something on it. If you change the rotor or the brake pads, make sure that you follow the correct bed-in procedure. This is very important to heat up the system. It makes sure that the rotor and the brake pads adapt to each other. Make 30 stops from 30 km per hour to zero to bed in the brake correctly. To ensure your brake performance throughout the year, you can repeat the bed-in process sometimes in between. 
This makes sure your system stays clean and is functioning at its best. The last part of the installation check is to make sure that you have a consistent bite point. To do that, we turn out the reed adjuster as far as possible. If we pull the lever, it shouldn't be parallel to the handlebar. If it is parallel to the handlebar, you have to bleed your brake system. This is only possible with new brake pads. If your bite point generally feels too spongy, then you also have to bleed your brake system. How to bleed your brake? You will find a video in the info box. If your brake is installed correctly and you still hear noises, this can be caused by depth threaded tires, wheels, forks or the frame at itself. In this system, it can generate vibrations through a rolling tire over the ground or something else. This might cause noises you will hear in the brake system. So then you should check what is the problem in the system. Maybe you can check the rotor or you can check uh, another tire. Now we have a closer look at our setup. Because if you run a city setup on your downhill bike or a downhill setup on your city bike, this can also cause problems. We can change brake pads and rotor sizes to optimize your brake performance to fit your specific requirements. The right choice of the brake pad is often underestimated. The brake pad itself is very important for your brake performance. Magura delivers four different compounds of brake pads. For example, if you need more power, then you can use a race brake pad. But it's a bit more noisy and it gets worn out faster. If you want to use a sport pad, for example, it's easier to modulate and it's more durable. Also, it's a bit more quieter. To see all different compounds that we deliver in brake pads, please check our brake pad chart. You also can change the rotor size to fit your specific requirements. The bigger the better. If you go one size bigger with your rotor, you have 10% more braking power. But not always go with the trend. Too much braking power will not suit your riding style. So if you want to mount a 2020 disc on your bike, this might have too much power and is very, very difficult to modulate. And also, it could cause problems that your system is not heating up properly and you always have problems with a system that is not batted in correctly. Besides the size of the rotor, you can also choose the type of the rotor. The MDRP and the MDRC rotors are stiffer to block resonations. Also, the MDRP and the MDRC have a bigger mass to increase the heat window to prevent brake fading. So these two rotors are particularly well suited to e-bikes and gravity bikes. To find out more about different brake setups, head over to our website. So thanks for watching and now have fun to maximize your brake performance.